Hi everybody, it is Sharon from Vivid Days and I'm taking advantage of this somewhat overcast grey day but dry day and I'm going to show you what we're going to work on in today's video. So I am on my art journaling adventures and trying to let go, let go of all the structure, let go of purposeful art to a degree and try to unlock my creativity and share it with you all. And on this art journal, rather than using um, napkins, which is what I did on my first one, what had a theme of love, uh, which was for me and my Neil from our Vegas wedding. Uh, this one is all about, I wanna put out some positivity into the world. And when I was doing my 28 day challenge, I created myself this butterfly, which I really enjoyed doing. And I thought I wanted to give it a go, a fairy. I haven't done a fairy in about seven years when I did my fae, who was a peacock goddess. And um, I was just channeling it. So I, I went into this with a purpose as far as, I knew I wanted to create something magical. I knew I wanted to create a fairy. And I used a magazine to help inspire me. And this is art journalism, so there are no rules. And the reason I want to talk to you about this is some people might be scared of drawing um, faces. I mean, at the end of the day, this is a fairy. There are no rules on what your fairy should look like. But if you're intimidated, this video shows you how to find an image, how to strip it down, and then how to add on the image. So you have creative rights to find a person within a magazine or brochure or a card you've got, rip it out and stick it on your art journaling page directly and then embellish from there. Or you can see how I use the image, trace around it and then flip it and then add on things to make it mine. So I am going to show you this wonderful piece. So if you want to see how I went around creating her, now this video, isn't she stunning? I mean, I just think you've caught her like in the middle of, you shouldn't see her, you've caught her and she's looking over the shoulder and she's giving you a little bit of chewed, a little bit of chewed. But at the same time, she's so pretty and you can't see because there's no sun shining, but she's got a little bit of glitter in her eyes, a little bit of glitter on her wings and her hair, all her gold, which is part of her skin and her wings come out there. I just love her and she has positive messages. So. I was channeling a few things and part of the art journal is for my soul and to let go and uh, this one just says just breathe and let it go and that's about me when I have that creative block or when I'm thinking about what is it that I want to do it's just take a breath and go with it and because there are no rules and this is your journal you don't have to show anybody but what you might do is stumble across some magic what you might do is be inspired with colors and you might go in there with a purpose like i did and it's going to evolve i thought my one wasn't going to have semi-real skin tones it's been years since i've done those but in this video i'm going to show you how i mix them up but again, there are no rules. If you want your fairy to have purple tones, green tones, uh, pink tones, brown tones, blue tones, you do that. That's thought, just the running off there. And what else? So the other message is remember to play, never doubt your instincts. And that instincts is when I think I produce my best work where I may have a purpose and go in there and then it doesn't feel right. So I just go with it. And that's when I produce, I think my best work or uh, maybe have those wow moments. Hopefully, hopefully you will too if you start to go on this journey. And the no next one is, with brave wings, she will fly. When nothing is sure, everything is possible. Don't forget to fly. Don't forget to share uh, your magic. Don't forget to spread your wings. I think it was also a positive message because what's happening out in there in the world, it's just crazy and it's a scary place. And with the war, with COVID, with just life. It's a scary place and I wanted to escape and I wanted this fairy to be something that shows that there is magic out there. I wanted her to cast her magic spells all over everybody and surrounding myself with colour and positivity is where I can put myself into a zone where I forget about all the traumas that's happening in the world just for a second. And yeah, so I think I think the interesting thing with me, and I'll share it along this journey, is when you're doing skin tones and you can self-doubt yourself and you can make them look like the grey and 
it's just about working with the brush work until you're happy with what you see. So I've left this real time. I have cut out the times when I'm putting my brush in the water and everything like that. And I do show you the colors that I work with. The only thing I forgot to show you is that there's white in there. And what everything else is listed, I'll show you all the materials I use. But again, you don't have to paint it. You can just stick your piece from your uh, magazine in there. But start to think about where it can go because I just flick through magazines or I might be walking around the streets. Sorry, I'm not crying. My eyes are just watering. Um, um, things might ignite something. It might be just, oh, look at that branch there. Now I can see something sat on that branch or um, that lady there. I just love that profile. And I think that she looks like you've caught her and she's a fairy if I just add this or that. So start to look at things with imagination, start to look at things with creativity about possibilities of what it could be. Anyway, um, she closes very nicely. It's in a mixed media book. I have got, it's the book where I did my, um, my love. I've done this one, I've not shared it with you because I'm not 100% happy with it. I'm gonna go back and rework that. But if you do wanna see how I created that, let me know. But my personal journey. Uh, and here she is so thumbs up subscribe share comments are always welcome thank you very much uh, Thor I, I just love these videos because I can make them feel like tranquil for you and then this is going on in the background or they might start having a fight or one of them decides to poop near me so it's just the reality of my world <laughs> we had enough there Zeus Zeus no no there's nobody there anyway i just i i just giggle behind the scenes because sometimes i give you this very tranquil video serene music candles going i've got my scents going and take you to a place of relaxation and behind the scenes you might be hearing me go so will you just shut up let me concentrate when i was actually doing her skin because I was doing it with acrylics, acrylics dry really fast. And then when you're committed to your skin tones, you want to get them down because when you make your next batch up, you might not get the tones the same, which worked in my favor because I brought her back more uh, life in her skin and I, I like the pink tones that you see here. But I was so stressed because I'd just mixed my batch up. I'd split it into my three sections. I'd started to paint it. And then Thor, who's not 100% doing great with his potty training, we're having more successes than not, just, you know, came and made a mess next to me. So I had to clean that up and then brought him out. And behind the scenes, I'm like, oh, I just want to get on with this. I want to create my zen. And so it kept taking me out of the zone. But that's the reality of first baby, fur babies. And it is first world problems. I know that. But ultimately, they are lovable creatures. But it's just the reality. I wanted to share it with you. I hope you don't mind. But yes, with every zen moment I create, there might be a little bit of drama behind the scenes going off. Anyway. I'm going to love you and leave you. You will see my entire process. I hope you enjoy coming on this journey with me. I absolutely love the support and um, the gift that you are giving me, which is encouraging me to keep going uh, and exploring my brushwork with you. And with each art journal, I might change what I'm putting in here, but I am loving fairies and I can see this on an actual canvas. So I might go back and revisit. In my community tab, I am going to put a picture of the outline of her face. So if you can't find a, uh, a face that inspires you or you don't have a magazine and you wanna use this one, feel free to use it and then embellish and create your own magic fairy. Now, just remember, hashtag Sharon Linley inspired me. That's a really great way of me finding your artwork recognizing your artwork because that's what my channel's about hopefully inspiring you you inspire me and it's the circle of art community love so i'm sharon i'm digressing but oh my god i believe i believe in magic see you on the next one bye bye so this was a magazine that was left by Neil's mom, Good Housekeeping. I encourage you to just flick through magazines and get inspired to see what colours or images stand out to you. Uh, don't be ashamed of doing it, especially while you're out journaling. And if you actually find a piece uh, with a great silhouette and you're not confident in drawing people, it's an absolutely amazing way for you to um, understand 
how uh, the proportions all work, especially if you want to do more realism. So find something. Now, I just loved the way that this person was looking and get some tracing paper. I just went over it with a pencil. I just did the outlines just to guide where it would be. But I envisaged her being the other way around. So you can do that by just flipping it the other way. And when you trace around that pencil, if you trace over it the other side and put it on your canvas, it will leave a slight imprint of where that pencil is going to be. Now, I'm just showing you there where all the different tones were, where it graduated from dark to light. And don't be afraid to reference that because that's going to help you try and make it 3D. Now, what I'm doing is showing you how I made my skin color. For me, I use a medium yellow, a purple add a tiny little bit of red and white and I always try to make a batch up so you will see I'll start to create the darker tones and then I'll leave some of that darker tone to one side but I'll scoop the rest up and add a little bit of white and I'll slowly do that four different times to get four different gradients now other people mix skin tones other ways and as I've said this is your fairy you could add bits of purple in there you could add uh, bits of pink in there any kind of tones that you want to come through but I thought I'd take this time to show you what it is that I actually do so I'm scooping some to one side and popping it there because I want that dark you don't really need a, a, so much dark in my opinion but it's a personal choice just to help with sculpting or building up that skin so I've added white I'll rinse and repeat I'll drag more of it off to one side which you're about to see my uh, plate is one that I use to mix all my acrylics up and then when it dries I'll scrape it off and put it in a tub where I'm saving it and then I've got a, a canvas so I'm just going to show you here by dabbing a little bit on my brush sorry I was using my left hand holding the camera so it's a bit wobbly but I'm showing you the four or five different shades that I make from the same batch now the benefits of doing that like that is for my opinion you're working with similar tones now I wanted to add a little bit more warmth to that skin so you can repeat the process and add slightly more red in there and that's going to give you more of a live skin where there's blood running through it in this color but again it's fairy it's fantasy you can do whatever you want but I just wanted to take this time I hope you find this part useful and if you are going to create your own fairy and not just stick an image in there I'd love to know how you go but don't worry don't don't go for realism this is this is your journal only you're going to see it and have some fun not too sure if you can see there but the slightly warmer tones but of the same family that's coming through and I just did that and if I was unhappy and I wanted to add a little bit more um, pinkness I added it directly to the skin and you saw her start to warm up I am just using Payne's grey and white and trying to go around the outline that I've done with my pencil mark and just created a background I just knew at this stage I wanted it to be darker. I wasn't too sure what her skin colour was going to be at this stage. In my head I thought I was going to do her a, a full on pink fairy or purple fairy. Um, and it's been years since I've done skin colour. And I thought, you know what, start doing it. Because one, I enjoy doing it. Two, I think it'll make it pop out really nicely here. And, and three, hopefully I can show you what I do now there are many different people out there that create skin tones there's different theories behind it uh, but just have some fun um, you don't see me paint the whole of this backdrop because I have kept this video in real time just to show you my process so you can understand um, how I break it down so I apologize um, for people that like fast forward videos but you can always just skip through it if you want this is designed to be a tutorial especially because I've designed des <laughs> design no especially because I am using my brush to build up this piece and I even though I just think yep I like this and I love starting with the eyes first you might say why do you do that Sharon if I feel like I can keep capture a spirit in there or a soul in there it helps helps me helps helps what is that word it helps me bring her to life now again you can choose to paint her in any order that you want to but for me it's about connecting with a piece and if I can connect to the eyes I start to sense a personality with the eyes especially the white area they're not a true white they're normally uh, got little bits of blue in there so I always start with a little bit of blue with white in there 
I put that on to start with and then I start to build up the whites to look like there's maybe a little bit of glistening there. I'm using my blue as you can see for the eyes and I do play around working from lighter to darker. I don't tend to overwork my eyes but I just want to keep going until I think wow to me she looks like she's staring at me. I feel like there's a soul in there and I can see some highlights and low lights. I will spend most of my time showing you how I do one eye and then skip the second eye because the process is the same and um, I do come back towards the end and just add a little bit more highlights and, and tweak them and add a little bit of uh, like the um, blood in the corner to make it look like she's more alive but I would love to hear when you are creating a person or a pet or a mystical creature What's the part of the artwork that you start with and why? I will find that so, so interesting. I love it when you start to add the pupils and the shading and especially when you have that tiny little bit of red and the eyes start to look like they're popping out of the page for me. Uh, I don't think I can articulate it, but this is the point where I encourage you to have that photograph to one side and you can have fun. You don't have to make it like that. You can change the eyes however you want. However, if you use it as a guide to think, well, where would the shadow be? Or where would the lighter areas be in the darker areas? Because that's going to help you sculpt them. And I use very little paint on my brush at the moment. And that might frustrate people. They might be saying, Sharon, you should be using a certain brush and this will be quicker. But I don't think that there is no right or wrong when you're painting something that's intuitive for you and remember this is art journaling there are no rules <laughs> um you'll see me going from light to dark to light to dark and that's what i like to do until i find a sweet spot for me and i don't know why but sometimes i just reach a point and i think I love that. I'm not going to be able to improve on it. It's probably going to distract or take away. Um, but be willing to do it. A little on your brush at a time, then you're not going to make anything overcommit and just have some fun and try and get that uh, that soul in your art, as I've been saying. I'm going to have to slow down my speaking now, aren't I? Because this is all in real time, other than me cleaning my brushes. So... I don't necessarily have to speed through this. I can breathe. Anyway, I hope you're going to um, interact with me throughout this. I'd love to know what you think about this piece. And do you want more real-time videos like this? Or would you like me to um, offer a fast-forward version for people that are proficient in their art? I just think with this piece, it's just lovely to see her come together. I'll probably mix it up with some little bit of Sharon's Dodgy FM. Look at that. That eye just looks like glass now. And that tiny little bit of white just in two little areas. Just make them look like little marbles there. You're suddenly going to think, oh, Sharon, the left eye now. Oh, there, there. <laughs> I was going to say two sentences once. At once. The left eye will suddenly come into shape because you're not going to see me working on it. But what I am doing now is that where the blue was for the eye, I'm now slowly adding that white to the center. So that's going to look like it's got a highlight or a reflection or even curved. And then it'll make it look like there's more shadows where there's that blue still towards where um, the eyes are meeting the eyelids. So now I'm adding a tiny little bit of red with a lot of diluted skin colour just to try and make those little corners of the eye and highlight where, um, I want to say the area of the eyes with the eyelashes. What's the an anatomical word for that? I don't know. But it helps give that 3D look. Now, I end up losing a lot of that with this piece um, because I go over it with different colours. But you can really, really exaggerate that look. And this is where I'm starting to work with tones of the darker skin colour that I mixed up. And when I first put this first layer on, I'm not going for perfection. I mean, it is an art journal anyway. But this is me rediscovering how to manipulate colors to help with that um you know 
texture of the skin or the different gradients of height and to help build that illusion that this is a face but again it's a fairy it could be anything you want i mean you show me an anatomical book of a fairy <laughs> anyway i'm i'm working through the darks to the lights i'm using multiple different colors and hopefully you'll be able to see that coming through um, and I blend them together. Now with acrylics, it's a challenging because you can mix a batch up and it could dry super quickly. And you have to make sure you've done your blending quick before it dries. Because the white I added into this particular um, skin color is quite wet, it gave me the gift of being able to blend it a lot. But like me, just think about layering it up. I started to put a lot of detail in to start with and then I realized, no, Sharon, you're going to be coming over with another layer. Um, I did keep some of this bottom skin color in there, but ultimately I come in and add slightly more warmer tones through there. But you can already see that just by adding little bits of light and dark area, it helps trick your brain to say that that area is higher than the other area or so on and so forth. Now I'm using a fairly small brush. It's just a brush of preference. I don't know um, if there is one you should particularly use for this other than one that you enjoy. And I think because I'm putting very little on the brush, it's helping give me some control. Now, this is where I realized I wanted to start bringing in some tones. So I actually put the red directly onto the skin and blended it in on the canvas, or should I say in the journaling book. And that's when I started to think, yeah, I'm definitely going to try and go more skin color um, and not necessarily go to fantasy colors. However, I do think that it added to this character and um, yeah, add to the innocence, but also intriguing, mystical uh, little Tinker. <laughs> what if that's where the name comes from? Tinkerbell. <laughs> I'm Sharon and I'm digressing. Uh, I am using my reference photo and um, just to help me understand where shading will be. Uh, but that's about it. Rest of it, I just wing it and go from what what looks good to me and and what to do next. So throughout my face, you will see me doing uh, back and forth, trying the different shades until I get it right. And um, that I'm really happy with the fairy. I've got to think of a name for her. I'd love to know what you would call her um, at the end of this. So I'm doing lots of ers and ums and everything like that. So I am doing a lot of lingo bingo. <laughs> Sharon, you need to get better at this. This is a very long uh, voiceover. I hope you're not all asleep with uh, me speaking. If you are, I'm just going to give you a nice little poke. <laughs> but come back because I do have some exciting things about to happen in my life. I've got a couple of videos that's going to announce that. And yeah, if you haven't been aware, recently I did a 28-day challenge. Um, and that's how I've got into art journaling because of that challenge. So please go over and have a little look ski at it and um, let me know what you think to that 28 day challenge. And if you have done a 28 day challenge yourself, uh, look, 28 day challenge yourself inspired by me or any work that's been inspired by me, remember to hashtag me, Sharon and Lee inspired me. That helps me locate your photos or your artwork. And I love to interact and see um, what you've done, especially if I've had a little bit of inspiration to that because that's what helps me keep going. It's what helped me keep putting my art out there with you. So thank you so much. And I hope wherever you are in the world, you are safe. It's a very scary world out there, but sending you all some love. So another thing you can do if you when you're trying to blend, uh, for me it's working okay because I'm blending it before it totally dries. But if it was to say start to dry, you can add a tiny little bit of water to your brush, and that'll help it spread and blend. And I'm just showing you here how for me it's a lot of backwards and forwards. I could have skipped all of this out, but I don't think that would have shown you how I build it up or how I play with it or layer with it and lay, lay with it with it so hopefully by me doing it in real time it's going to give you um, maybe encouragement confidence or an understanding of what it is that I do within my processes um, I might put a little bit of music on in the background and just come and talk as I get to anything that's really poignant and relevant if you don't like the music you can always switch your volume down but I'll put it on just subtly for those people that do just want to relax uh, and watch this fairy come to life
hope you're feeling very relaxed. I just want to talk a little bit around the back area. When I had the lines there, it helped me understand where my shoulder was, where my back was, and the composition. And when I coloured it all in, I lost that and she looked like some kind of weird, I don't know, creature. I suppose fairies could be weird creatures. So at the minute, what you're seeing me doing is stripping it back down and trying to um, give you the illusion that she's looking over her shoulder again and looking back and... I think this is one of the things I want to just encourage you to do is don't worry about it. If you know you've lost it for a little bit, just work on your shading tones and then use your reference photo. And if you go back to that and put the colours where you're seeing it, it'll come back pretty quick as opposed to you fighting it. So I basically brought some of that dark tones back. I'm letting it dry. I'm now working on my forehead area and, and giving some nice, I think, highlights. And you'll start to see me bring some of that colour through. And then I'll go back to that back area and you will see uh, that it starts to then resemble her looking over her shoulder again. And it's just, it's, I've said it many a time, but it is just fun just doing the dance of um, working with your shading and helping your mind be tricked. Again, at this stage, once I'm going over the base layer that I've done, there's very little paint on my brush most of the time. Um, it's there just to try and create um, a little bit of balance, a little bit of highlight, low light. And, and I think that's the trick for me sometimes, little but often layering it all back and forth and um, until you get the balance right. So I'm just trying to tone in some of those pink areas. So you see me going over there and there's a slight pinkish tinge to that um, skin colour. I put that on and then I go back over it with a little bit of skin colour until I get the balance. And it's just enough, I think, to make her look blushed like she's been caught. And I don't know, it just makes her feel more alive to me. But at this stage, I'm starting to, well, I'm enjoying the project all the way. But I think at this stage, I'm thinking, OK, I'm getting it now. It's starting to come alive more. I'm starting to enjoy what I'm seeing. I'm going off into the fantasy realm and I can see her cheekiness coming through. And yeah, I'm just loving this process. So I'm not going to talk much more on the skin area because it is pretty much what I've said. Work with the different shades, add some colouring. Don't be afraid, it's fantasy. And keep going backwards and forwards until you get the balance right, until you're happy with and use a reference photo so you understand where the highlights and low lights are and keep doing it until you get a balance and i've said that again so i'm sharon i'm digressing i'm going to put some more music on and hopefully you are going to go off into a tranquil state while all the dogs are barking around me and you're not going to be able to hear that and Hopefully you will have learnt something through this. But do let me know, have you found really value in being able to watch me go back and forth? Has it given you confidence to try it again? Is it uh, giving you an understanding as to what's going through my mind and why? Or do you want more commentary? Do you want less commentary? Do you want it speeded up? Do you not? I don't know. You let me know because I really do appreciate your um, feedback. But because this is art journaling... And I'm doing a purposeful um, little fairy. I wanted to really slow it down for you to show how I'm doing it. And maybe you're going to paint along with me. So if that's the case, remember, hashtag Sharon Inley inspired me. Maybe um, you have a similar process or not. And I'd just love to hear what you're saying. The lips actually took me quite a while. Uh, not on this stage. I, I wanted to keep them fairly neutral and fairly um, innocent. I then do come and tart them up a little bit, which <laughs> I absolutely love. And uh, But when I look back on her, when she's almost got no hair on, no, um, no eyelashes, I actually really like that. And I might come back and do some fairies that way. Uh, but I also like them where they've got a little bit of chewed as well. Anyway, I'm sure and I'm digressing, aren't I? I really am. You'll see me come and add purple and pink to the hair. I like to work wet on wet with um, with the first layer just to try and make it look a little bit more, I think, organic. So there'll be dark bits of purple. I'll come in with lighter purple. I'll then come and add my fluorescent pink. And I don't want it to be perfectly smooth. So you'll see me make it quite jagged and that's purposefully uh, to help with the illusion of more realism. 
I think that's the word I'm looking for. And yeah, uh, but I will come back when we're talking about the wings. But for now, I just want you to watch this butte come into life. All right, speak shortly.
I hope to enjoy seeing the evolution of her lips and her becoming a tart, then angelic, then a tart, then angelic. Uh, and now I've got a, a fairly good balance and I'm loving the back area now and shoulders and some of those warm tones that's coming through. I'm now focusing on the eyes and trying to get more highlights uh, and shadows in that area and trying to add a little bit of youthful glow back to her. Uh, you'll see me work on that area. Uh, I don't spend too long on this, this particular part, but it's more just um, helping her eyes pop. Um, I'll come in then and add some uh, purple for her eyelashes and her eyebrows. And I come through and bring a little bit of that um, dark light and a little bit of pink towards the end. But I decided that this, this particular fairy soul... Uh, because she's got a little bit of that chewed, was going to be pink and purple. And I'm channeling a lot of pink and purple at the moment. And um, I think there's a reason to it. I'm doing a, a little bit of research into colour study at the moment. And if you're interested in that, I can share it with you, which is all around uh, understanding why am I why am I drawn to purples and pinks at the moment. And it all aligns beautifully. I did do a video of it, but... Uh, to go with this but because it was such a long video I thought no I'll save that one and if you're interested let me know I can read out the cards or what I've learned after I've been drawn to a certain colour and maybe you want to learn a little bit about colour therapy as well or, or anything like that anyway um, I do love that eyebrow I do add a little bit of a beauty spot under her eye because I just felt that she deserved that um, but the, the wing and the hair are very quick compared to her face and her body uh, but I have left it in real time again the only um, well I've not sped it up but when I start to add the detailed parts towards the end which is the bit of bling bit of gold um, I show you what I'm doing and why but I don't I don't get you to watch the same process all the way through because it's repetitive but I think you get to understand what it is that I'm doing and yeah, if you were painting her at this point, what colour would you have done her hair and eyebrows? I would love to know your thoughts on that. And I just love her, uh, I want to say elf-like ears, elf -like ears, but who who's to say that fairies can't have pointy ears as well? <laughs> Adds to that mystical look, in my opinion. Anyway, I absolutely love, um, I think, the the softness of the skin around her eyes and her nose um yeah I, I think that just helps her look like we've caught her and she was unexpected but this is where you can see me with i've got a slightly thicker brush now and in there i'm going to be rotating between a dark purple add a little bit of white so it's lighter uh, making sure that my brush is not level so it's a straight line I'm bringing it forward a little bit, slightly further back, just so it looks like a natural hairline that's not perfectly straight. Uh, and I think the effect looks, I'm hearing myself set them a lot, I do apologise. I think that looks um, really cute. And I rotate the light colour, drag that down, and then if I'm working on the dark, I drag it up. And that helps you with some of that tones or maybe looking like there's little gaps in your hair so you see in the the darker parts coming through. I, originally I was going to have her hair down, but I just I just felt like that she's a busy fairy. She's got it up in a bun and uh, she's she's okay with that. <laughs> oh my God, I am filling this with lots of crap, aren't I? I'd love to know if you've uh, actually listened to this all the way through and you heard me say that. If you have, go, holla! <laughs> oh, it just keeps me amused while I'm working through this. I'm going to have to stop soon and uh, um, cook some food for my Neil. Uh, he's about to go out on the treadmill, but he looks after the fur babies and cooks food just about every night. But on my day off, I give back. So I've done a little bit of housework, a little bit of life admin. Now I'm doing some editing and I will finish off the editing after I've cooked food. But yeah, isn't she coming together beautifully? All right, I will come back when we get to the wing part, but until now, you understand what I'm doing with the hair. I do ruffle a little bit around the ears because I want to make it look like it's that fluffy hair here, and I do bring it down into her neckline. So, yeah, I'll speak to you shortly.
So we are on the home stretch and we're on to the wings and I just really wanted to work between the purple, the blue, the pink and I was going to do a certain pattern but I thought no I just want to blend it together so you know, I have skipped little bits through it but I basically just apply it, keep brushing it, getting the tones alike then come and add some clear bold colours because I know I'm going to add little lines in it um, so you can see I'm just bringing some defined colour through there and, and bleeding it until I'm happy. I want the edges definitely though to be that darker colour. At this stage I didn't know I was going to bring in my gold pen or the gold leaf but I, the wings and how it met the skin look quite disconnected to me and I was thinking well how can I make it still look mystical and magical but make it look like it makes sense and that's where I, I thought well what would the gold look like because it's going to tone it through to the skin colour it's going to hopefully uh, add a little bit more, I don't know, sass to her and yeah, make her look glamorous, but at the same time still look like a fairy. Adding a little bit white there while the paint was still quite light, a tiny little dot there, uh, and just blending it. And I just had real fun doing that. I want to go back to the eyes though, while you still see me paint the wings. There's a lot of restraint there. I don't like to put a lot of eyelashes I come in a little bit with that purple acrylic pen later to just make some lashes look slightly longer but it was all done with a very thin brush but I would encourage a restraint, restraint, restraint when it comes to eyelashes and this is where I came back and added some of that fluoro pink in and just bring in it so I just wanted it to look like her wings are an extension of her hair or that it's part of her being, her essence majesticalness and I really like that especially because you can see some of those dark purples coming through so try not to make it too um, um, symmetrical or I wanted it to be quite random and I thought you know what let's highlight her eyebrows with a little bit of pink because that's going to bring it all together I added a tiny little bit to her lips but you didn't really see that coming through but I just thought that might be a nice addition and um, I'm just making sure that I do have a little bit of white left on those lips because a little bit of white on your lips really helps it look a little bit moist um, and helps with that illusion of them being real lips. And yeah, I, I just really love, this is, this is where I'm trying to make the wings look like they make sense going into the back area. So I tried going back over all my different colours again, dark, light, everything, until I thought, you know what? let's try the gold pen so this is where i'm using the acrylic um pen I'm going quite restrained still but i still wanted to have them uh, you can see the eyelashes have extended a little bit mainly on the top area I didn't add a lot on the little and i thought you know what give this sassy chick a little uh, beauty spot and i was hoping at this stage to go through here with the purple acrylic and give myself dark lines but because the pen was the pen the paint was wet it actually pulled it off but I actually didn't mind that it created a nice effect because you're getting a little bit of pink showing through or purple and blue in different areas and that's when I started to go on an adventure went with my intuition I did wipe all the paint off the end of this pen by the way no acrylic pen was hurt in the making of this video and then this is when I thought hang on let me add a little bit of the gold at this the paint had more or less dried and I thought, be adventurous, Sharon. At this point, I'm probably going, eek, is it going to work or is it going to ruin it? So I added it slightly in an area where not too obvious. And I thought, you know what, this is really going to work. And then I just had fun. And I thought, you know what, this majestical uh, little fairy of mine is going to have bits of gold in her wings, bits of gold uh, going into her back area. And um, it took me a day to work on it before I came back and decided to add some gold to her face and her back and her skin to make it look like she has gold going through her and also a little bit of glitter to the wings because I wanted her to sparkle and I wanted to be magic fairy dust wherever she be I'm putting my positive words on which you heard me talk about at the beginning of this video and put whatever words are speaking to you at the time that you're creating in your art journal and I did seal it all with uh, Mod Podge uh, gloss at the end and you might think oh why did you do that Sharon I didn't want the gold leaf or anything like that to ruin and it just gave it a nice shine and it was absolutely perfect for this but I'd love your thoughts on what you would do to seal a piece like this and yeah how did you 
connect to the words that I put, um, you, I don't think you saw it, but around the edge of the pages, I do add a little bit of black ink to my finger and I rub it just to try and help create that border and draw your eyes into the middle. Not that I think she needed too much because she was quite um, prominent. I do come and add more of a shadow to where her face is meeting um, the wall. Um, I think it adds value. You, you could you could have choose not to do that, but I think it helps make her pop and make her look like she stood against something And when we caught her. And yeah, I just took my time with it, added a tiny little bit of paint to that brush and slowly worked through until I was happy. Uh, again, you don't have to do that. And I went very restrained with the Mod Podge, putting it on her skin and gold um gold leaf but i think it pops i think those little additions made sense to me i'd love your thoughts on it but we're towards the end of the video now there's just going to be a little bit of review where i'll take you in close and show you the products i use but thank you for hanging out with me have the most amazing day remember thumbs up subscribe share comments are always welcome and let me know what you think to this piece would you like to see me explore more fairies cool have a magical day i'll speak to you soon Bye-bye. I have just finished working on this beauty and she is just drying so can't really handle her much. I'm bringing my light into the side because I want you to be able to see hopefully some of the glitter that's been added um, mainly around the eye area, very subtle. Maybe I'll have to wait. <laughs> anyway, there is some, I just love everything about her. Uh, what a journey. She's took me on a majestical uh, little trip. Let me show you the materials. 